What's up guys, Lucky Locks here, and welcome back to another prediction video. This is going to be for LFA 121, the first LFA card of the new year, and I'm excited to get back into it. Pretty good card for us on the first time back here with a, uh, a lot of big names on the regional scene, and I'm excited to just start breaking down these fights. So without further ado, let's get into the first one. So for our first fight of the main card, we have John Pham coming up against Anvar Boy Nazarov, and this is going to be at 145 pounds. And Pham has had a 1-7 in seven amateur career, so not really that great, but has kind of turned it around. He's 4-2 and two as a pro now with one finish. His loss was to Eddie Torres, not the Eddie Torres from CFFC, a different Eddie Torres, but still a good fighter. And his other loss was Christian Rodriguez on LFA, who was also a pretty good prospect. Uh, Fom is currently on a two-fight win streak with a win over Evers Anderson. That's pretty good. Um, Boy Nazarov has a long kickboxing career on Bellator and Glory, now trying his hand at MMA. He's 2-0 so far, two round one knockouts over not really very good opponents at all. I think that this will be his toughest test so far in the MMA world, but I still am going to go with Boy Nazarov here. I feel like he's going to be technically uh, a lot better. I feel like that kickboxing acumen is going to come into play, training at Tiger Muay Thai. Uh, he's also going to have a fairly big size advantage in this one, so I'm going with the bigger, longer guy, Anvar Boy Nazarov, to get this one done, and I feel like he's going to use that kickboxing and perhaps find a finish in this one. Next up, we have a very interesting Bantamweight matchup between Alden Correa and Michael Sear. So Correa is a 23-year-old flyweight prospect we've seen a number of times in LFA, considered perhaps the best 125-pound prospect in the state of Texas. And uh, if you were to say that to me, I don't think I would challenge you on that, just off the top of my head. Uh, definitely a very good looking prospect, but he's coming up against Michael Sear here, and this is going to be one of the tougher matchups, probably the toughest matchup that he's had thus far in his MMA career. He's jumping up to 135 pounds here, has fought a few times at 135 in the past, he's done 130 pound catch weights, uh, but you know, primarily Korea is a flyweight. He has a 5-0 pro record with four finishes, he was a 5-0 amateur as well. He's aggressive, he's athletic, looks for the finish, he's a strong grappler. He's got good movement, he's a pretty good striker, likes the low kicks, has some decent counter striking, but an explosive fighter at 125, we'll see what he looks like up a weight class, but I believe he can carry his explosiveness up to 135 with him. He is a very dangerous grappler, three round one submissions in five fights, and very quick out there, you know, he's a speedy guy. Michael Sear, on the other hand... Um, you know, like I mentioned, I think this is going to be one of the toughest matches that Korea has had, and it's going to be the toughest matchup that Michael Sear has had as well. I think that's an important aspect to keep in mind, too. Uh, these are just two good prospects matching up here. Sear's 3-0, hasn't fought the greatest competition, but three early finishes. He's getting those guys out of there like you would expect him to do. Korea has probably fought, well, not probably, he's fought a bit higher level guys so far in his career, but Sears training at a warrior camp in Spokane. We've seen his teammate Terrence McKinney in LFA lots of times now in the UFC and doing really well. So Sears an up-and-coming guy from the Pacific Northwest. He's a good fighter. Uh, we have seen him get taken down, but he's shown a pretty good get-up game and some really good wrestling himself. He's seen uh, We've seen him have a lot of success on the ground, getting dominant positions, showing some good submission offense, and Korea is another very skilled grappler. He might not have that usual advantage in those exchanges coming into this matchup uh, but I am going to go with Alden Korea here I feel like he's a more complete fighter a little bit more polished at this point he is a very very promising prospect and uh, he is coming up a weight class he does have a pretty tough matchup in this one but I'm still going to favor Alden Korea um, at the line I think he's like minus 800 or something like that like that's almost tempting me to put a play on Michael Sear in this one but I'm probably just going to pass. I don't really like the number. I feel like it should be a little bit closer. I still would have Korea as the favorite, don't get me wrong, but uh, maybe not like that big minus 800 number that he's at at the moment. So, uh, But yeah, just purely from a prediction standpoint, give me all the Korea to get this one done and remain undefeated. So moving right along to the next fight on the card, we have Steve Jones coming up against Chris Brown. And this is another interesting matchup, man. Chris Brown, 7-3 and three fighter representing Jackson Wink, turned pro after a 4-0 amateur career, has a pro win over current CFFC lightweight champ Blake Smith, 
fought all over the place between lightweight and welterweight. Lots of catchweight bouts, you know, 160, 165. His last bout was actually at 175. And his three losses were Thomas Gifford, Ignacio Bahamondes, who both competed in the UFC. Bahamondes is currently there and doing really well. Um, and Carrington Banks, who's a really solid regional guy from Elevation Fight Team. You might know him from The Ultimate Fighter in 2015, where he defeated Sabah Hamasi. But yeah, Chris Brown is currently on a two-fight win streak in LFA. He was supposed to fight Steve Jones before, but it fell through. He's got good footwork. He likes to stay to the outside. He's light on his feet. He's got a long reach at 74 inches. He will be the longer man in this fight. He uses these little sidekicks and knee stomps like a jab, uses it to keep the distance. Um, he's a good striker, does a good job rolling with the punches. Lost the fight to Ignacio Bahamondes, but held his own in there with a really great fighter. It was a split decision. We have seen some wrestling out of him in past fights. We've also seen him struggle with the wrestling a little bit in the fight against Carrington Banks, but I mean, it is Carrington Banks at the end of the day. Um, and looking at Jones across the cage, he's also a very good fighter. You know, this is a good matchup. He's training with some good guys in Texas. 10 amateur fights before going pro he is now a 10 uh, sorry an 8 and 0 pro in uh, 10 fights and the last fight he was defeated by Nikolai Veritenikov and that snapped a five fight win streak for Jones he is the American Combat Alliance 170 pound champ he had a really nice win on LFA over Tyler Ray a Sanford MMA product and Jones was a big underdog in that fight and he's got good boxing I think he is the cleaner boxer in this matchup not insane power but pretty stiff crisp strikes if he lands the right one it's going to be a heavy shot he's got good combinations not much of a kicker though so he is going to differ quite a bit from Brown in that aspect. He has shown some serviceable takedown defense and scrambling ability against Tyler Ray. Ray did get some control time eventually and find the mountain round two, but Jones was able to escape and get back to his feet. Chris Brown, I don't think is going to try to replicate any of that performance that Tyler Ray had. Um, I just don't really see that happening. I see this playing out mostly on the feet. Uh, and Jones has a pretty decent clinch game as well. So I am going to go with Steve Jones in this one. He originally was the dog in this fight. He is now a slight favorite. I have no play on it, and I probably will end up leaving this one alone just because I do think that Chris Brown also is really good. I picked Chris Brown in both of his last two fights. Um, I was able to actually bet him as a dog two fights ago against Calvin Rayford, and uh, that one cashed for me. So Chris Brown is definitely in my good graces, but uh, unfortunately, I think I'm going to lean towards Steve Jones in this one, but definitely a close fight, and I probably am just going to end up passing on this one. Okay, so let's move on to a bantamweight bout between Isaiah Gutierrez and Keaton Gordon, and Gutierrez is a 6-1 and Texan prospect from Travis Luter, BJJ. Fought at 125 earlier in his career, went on to win the 135-pound belt in CCFC, not CFFC, CCFC, and also in XKO. And the one loss in his career came on LFA against Kevin Worth, who was a really good fighter. And Evers Anderson, who he fought and defeated most recently, is a solid opponent as well. Um, Anderson has already fought Gutierrez's opponent, Gordon, before and scored a knockout win there. So they also have a common opponent in Alonzo Jordan, who Gutierrez defeated via split decision, but Gordon was uh, submitted in his meeting with Jordan there. So uh, pretty rangy fighter, Isaiah Gutierrez. Good footwork, good movement, very light on his feet. Uh, he will switch stances to get different angles. He has a pretty kick-based attack. He invests in those low kicks. Will throw some flashier techniques too, some spinning back kicks, some hook kicks. And the work to the legs is just really vicious and effective. I've seen that work really well for him in a number of different fights. And he's just a good-looking striker. He's very explosive. He has a solid jiu-jitsu game, saw him work some wrestling against Aaron Vickers on Bellator, showed some good ability to defend the takedown in that fight um, as well, and I think he'll be the better grappler in this one, actually. He has some speed, both in his movement and in his speed of strikes. Uh, he's gone five rounds before for that XKO championship in his last fight, so he looks to have pretty good cardio as well. I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue here. Gordon, on the other hand, is also fighting out of Texas. He has a 6-5 and five record. He has fought Mark De La Rosa on Legacy FC back in 2015. He's 4-7 in his last seven fights, trading wins and losses each time. He's a solid fighter, better than the record suggests. Um, he's pretty light on his feet as well, looks to work some feints, a little more wild than Gutierrez, but somewhat similar styles. He likes to eat up the lead leg. He's a good striker, has good kickboxing. 
We have seen him taken down a bit in previous fights. I've seen him land uh, some takedowns as well. He's active looking from submissions when he is on bottom. I could see Gutierrez having some success against Gordon with the grappling. Uh, Gordon is also pretty good in the clinch. He's got pretty good quickness on the feet as well. But in this one, I got to go with Isaiah Gutierrez to get it done. Um, I just feel like he's the better fighter here. Um, he is a pretty big favorite in this one. So, I mean... It is what it is. I feel like it's somewhat justified to have uh, Gutierrez as a pretty solid favorite, but I'm not sure if I'll really have any piece of it at minus 600. We'll have to see what it looks like closer to the fight, but I do feel pretty confident about Gutierrez getting the win in this spot. So moving on to a lightweight bout between Elijah Johns and Brandon Phillips. Elijah Johns will be the taller and longer man in the cage. Pretty decent height advantage training at Fortis MMA. Most recently saw him fight Bruno Souza in the main event of LFA 102. Lost a split decision there. Souza went on to be the 145 pound champ and then sign a UFC contract. So, you know, that hasn't aged horribly. Johns hasn't fought a ton of really tough guys outside of Bruno Souza and Eddie Brown. And those are his two losses on his 7-2 and two resume. Seven of his nine pro fights have been in the LFA. So he hasn't had a weak strength of schedule by any means, but not super strong either. Uh, he does throw some feints. He fakes the level change, light on his feet, but doesn't really dart in and out a whole bunch. He kind of likes to cut off the cage. Powerful striker, not always the most precise, and he can leave himself open for counters at times. Phillips is a good striker, and I wouldn't be surprised if he tags Johns a few times. I think Johns will be the one with more power in his shot here however but Johns tries to enter with the jab you would like to see a few more combos from him sometimes just throw singular strikes or we'll try to enter with the double jab and Johns is the bigger man I think if he lands clean here I could see it doing some real damage he's a good wrestler he likes to get inside and get in on a leg he has good takedown defense but we've seen him taken down in the past haven't seen him really held down a whole lot I don't really think it's going to happen in this fight I really seriously doubt uh, he gets taken down by Brandon Phillips I kind of doubt that Phillips is even going to try that to be honest um, but I do think that Johns will definitely have the advantage in the wrestling exchanges in this fight I don't think that Johns is going to have any issues going hard for three rounds here Brandon Phillips has fought at Bantamweight fought at Featherweight fought at Lightweight he's back in the middle at Featherweight here um, I actually think I called this one a lightweight bout at uh, the beginning of the segment, so that is my fault. This is actually a 145-pound uh, fight. Uh, but yeah, back to the breakdown. Phillips is listed at 5'5 on Tapology. He is listed at 5'6 on the last LFA broadcast, so not a huge difference, but still worth noting. I think he's an 8-4 and four MMA fighter who's been doing a lot of kickboxing lately. Three of the four losses are made up of AJ McKee, Bryce Mitchell, and Aaron McKenzie. Really can't fault him uh, for any of them there. AJ McKee and Mitchell were about 145 pounds. Uh, after those, he moved to 135 pounds for two fights and won both. Started kickboxing and won an XFN kickboxing title at 145 pounds. Then started kickboxing at 155. His most recent fight was Aaron McKenzie at 155. And he is back at 145 for this match against Johns. And he's got pretty good feints, pretty good footwork. He's able to strike moving backwards if he needs to. He's able to get out of the pocket when his opponent enters and land a few shots on his exit. He has quick hands. He likes that one too. I think he will have an advantage over Johns with the hand speed. Really quick straight jab. Was able to beat Aaron McKenzie to the punch a lot in his last fight with that jab. Um, especially earlier on. And McKenzie had four and a half inches of reach on him. Uh, Phillips will jab to the body as well. He will throw more combinations than Johns here. With his kickboxing style, you kind of expect the takedown defense to be the weak spot. Um, but he's shown some decent ability to defend the takedowns in the past though. And he does a good job of reading his opponent and kind of recognizing when that shot is going to come. And he starts to move his hips out of the way so that they can't get in on a good shot. Had really solid takedown defense for the first two rounds against Aaron McKenzie. Finally got taken down a bit in round three after he had taken some damage on the feet. Didn't get held down too much though. And McKenzie is a 155er and he's a pretty big one at that. So I was definitely impressed with Phillips in that McKenzie fight. Phillips is pretty quick out there. He will be the faster fighter in my opinion. He had good output for three hard rounds against Aaron McKenzie. And uh, he's coming back from 145 sorry coming back to 145 from 155 that might impact that but he's fought all over I really don't see it as a huge issue so this is an interesting fight man if you gave me this fight out of pick'em I probably would tell you Elijah Johns but 
Uh, Phillips seems to be just becoming the bigger underdog uh, by the hour here. I mean, he's up to, uh, he opened, I believe, at plus 165, uh, went to plus 200. I believe he's at plus 225 here. So if this keeps going in that direction, I actually think I'll have a small piece of Brandon Phillips because uh, he, I was pretty impressed with him against Aaron McKenzie. And I feel like this is somewhat of a similar style matchup, but I don't think that Johns is as good of a fighter as Aaron McKenzie. He's not going to have the same size advantage that, um, um, Aaron McKenzie had I don't think he's as good of a striker as McKenzie is and Phillips was having some pretty decent success uh, early against McKenzie and I had a bet on McKenzie in that fight I honestly was a little bit scared going to the judges I mean I thought McKenzie won the uh, third round a hundred percent I thought that Phillips won the first round and I thought that the second round was pretty close and that was a fight where uh, it wasn't really supposed to be super close between the two of them so I think honestly guys if uh if the line keeps going the way it is, I might have a small piece of Brandon Phillips, but nothing at the moment. And if it was at a pick I probably would lead, uh, lean towards Elijah John. So just keep that in mind. But this is a tough, uh, a tough one to call, and I'm going to have to see what the number looks like closer to the fight. So make sure you're following me on... Uh on Twitter to uh, to see what I'm going to end up betting there if I do end up betting this one. But yeah, um, I think at the number, I kind of like Brandon Phillips prediction-wise. Um, I kind of like... Uh, Elijah Johns in this one so it's gonna be it's gonna be tough but I, I could definitely see myself having a small play on Brandon Phillips here if we get the right number all right and we're finally here at the main event of the evening and it's a great fight between Aaron McKenzie and Joshua Jones at lightweight um, Aaron McKenzie is 10-2-1. He is on a three-fight win streak at the moment. His last loss was Chris Gonzalez, a very talented wrestler and a great Bellator prospect that we will be seeing in the cage this month, actually, in Bellator. Um, but yeah, Aaron McKenzie is a very experienced regional fighter. If you follow the regional circuits in North America, you probably know this guy. Um, extensive amateur career as well. His last three fights have come on LFA. He's won all three. He's coming off a win over Brandon Phillips. And Phillips is a guy that's not usually a 155-pounder. Obviously, we just talked about him uh, in the co-main event to this card, so I don't think we have to say too much more there. But McKenzie has got to be one of the better 155-pounders in the organization at the moment. The title is currently vacant, I believe, and uh, I think he should be in consideration for the title fight with a win here. Uh, he can be a bit of a slow starter at the times, but he is good wrestling and grappling, has solid kickboxing as well. He's a well-rounded fighter. I like his game. I just wish he didn't make you sweat so much in the first round sometimes, but uh, you know, normally he finds a way to, uh, to get it done in the later rounds and he throws some feints he gives some different looks he's gonna have a big reach advantage in this fight likes the low kicks pretty good movement I think that McKenzie will be a little bit more athletic in this bout um, he's not a small guy at 155 by any means he has decent power he's decent standing not the slickest striker around but definitely very serviceable in uh, that department he's a pretty good wrestler great grappler very dangerous on the ground we've seen that bail him out of some tricky situations before great to have in his back pocket when times get tough um, he's not the quickest you know he's a bigger guy at this weight as I mentioned but I still think he will be a little bit quicker than Jones in this one uh, and he, I think he's going to be able to stay fresh into the later rounds he's got good cardio he's got good durability as well he can take a punch he is a mentally strong fighter which I believe is an important trait in MMA um, Joshua Jones, on the other hand, is two years younger than McKenzie. He's also been around the block. He's got an 11 and 6 record. Um, you know, uh, 17 pro fights, man. That's a lot of fights. He's 5 and 5 in his last 10. He has fought pretty decent guys, to be fair to him. And some of those losses, like Jacob Rosales, Christian uh, Aguilera, are just not too bad, you know? Um, those aren't bad names to lose to. Um, I picked Jones to win in his last fight on Bellator against Cisneros, but I think this is going to be a tough fight for him. Uh, Tough for McKenzie, too. Jones is a game guy. Uh, he's a well-rounded fighter, but I think this is going to be be a tough one for Jones. He's fought at 180-pound catch weight in his last fight. Um, now he's back down at 155, so kind of uh, a big difference there. He's not the most dynamic mover in the cage. I don't think he'll throw as many feints as McKenzie, um, but he has some pop on his punches. He's got powerful double leg takedowns as well. He normally sets those up pretty well. He can bring out actually some high kicks in some instances. If he closes the distance, which he no doubt will want to do here, I could see him getting off some heavy shots to McKenzie, who doesn't always have the best uh, striking defense. But yeah, Joshua Jones is a good wrestler. He was able to use his wrestling in his last fight and have a lot of success. Looks to do damage from top position you know that's important he's not content just to lay there he looks to advance looks to land shots um doesn't have a ton of speed and quickness standing but uh i think that uh he still will be i don't think it's going to be a glaring discrepancy to you know to say the least 
Um, doesn't look like the most fit guy ever, but he's able to keep a pretty good pace in his fights. And in his last fight, he was able to keep a pretty good pace as well. Granted, it ended in the second round, but still a pretty good work rate throughout the fight. But I'm just going to have to go with Aaron McKenzie here. I think he's just slightly a level above. Um, I think the big reach advantage will play to his favor on the feet. I think that there could be some interesting wrestling exchanges here, but I think McKenzie is for sure uh, the better grappler of the two, but also Joshua Jones is a very good grappler as well. I'm not trying to uh, say anything negative about him in that regard. Um, yeah, so there could be some interesting exchanges, but uh, I think that maybe the bigger frame of McKenzie could help him out in, uh, and give him the extra edge in those situations. So I am going to go with Aaron McKenzie to win this one. I feel like he is just uh, the slightly better fighter in this one. So that's going to do it for my LFA 121 predictions, guys. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch. I appreciate it. Uh, best of luck on LFA. Best of luck uh, on uh, the UFC this weekend as well if you choose to bet that too. So... Uh, as always, guys, take care, and I'll catch you on the next one.